One can have all the material abundance in the world, but if there's no peace, it's not worth much, for they cannot even enjoy it. We see this clearly in this week's Torah portion, Michal Kosai. God opens by promising great material abundance for observing his mitzvahs and toiling in Torah study, but doesn't stop there. In Leviticus chapter 26, verse 6, God says, V'nasati shalom ba'oretz. And I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down with no one to frighten you. Rashi comments on this verse. You might say, here is food and here is drink. But if there's no peace, there is nothing. Scripture therefore states, after all this blessing, I will grant you peace in the land. From here we learn that peace is equal to everything else. When it comes to peace, there are many forms. There is peace between man and God. There is peace between spouses. There is peace. Inner peace, there is peace between man and his neighbors. Each one of these is essential to living a productive life. The Talmud explains the reason for lighting Shabbat candles is to create a peaceful atmosphere in the home. For if the room is dark, people may stumble or fall. Such an environment will surely lead to bickering. The Shabbat candles bring light and thus family tranquility to the home. Universal, true and complete peace will only be a reality when Mashiach comes. As the prophet Isaiah describes in chapter 11, And a wolf shall lie with a lamb, and a leopard shall lie with a kid, and a calf, and a lion cub, and a fatling shall lie together, and a small child shall lead them. We still live in a very dark world, a world in which an 18-year-old can be so evil as to walk into an elementary school and massacre 19 school children and two teachers. Unfortunately, this isn't the first such massacre. And for this to be the last, changes need to be made. If we are to usher in the Messianic era, we must establish and foster warm, love-filled, illuminated homes. A home is only as warm as the individuals residing in it. The more people share and care for each other, the more light we create. The more lit the environment, the less likely we are to trip, stumble, fall, and then fight. I read a story this week of a beer who was shot and killed after attacking a Wisconsin family in their home. The story began when the beer climbed on their porch and started eating from the bird feeder. Trying to scare and chase the beer away, the couple started screaming and making loud noises. The beer, who had a young cub nearby, thought this was an attack and plowed through the porch window into the home, attacking the couple, who eventually had to kill it in self-defense. The Baal Shem Tov taught us that everything one sees or hears is to teach us a lesson in how to better serve Almighty God. So I asked myself, what's the lesson in this for me? And perhaps this story is a reflection of life. How many times are we doing our thing, eating from the proverbial bird feeder, Sometimes we're alone, sometimes we're with others. When all of a sudden someone else causes a disturbance to us. The disturbance comes in so many different forms. We now have two ways to react. We can just let it go and walk away, or we can be like the beer and attack back. Peaceful people project similar sentiments onto others and therefore don't fear. They don't misread figurative noise for an attack. While they may not understand the reason for that unwelcome noise, they gather the inner strength and just walk away. The animalistic way is to immediately charge and attack when someone else disturbs us. But this approach may momentarily feel good, for I was able to hit back and unload some anger, but it just may lead to a dead beer. The end of this story in Wisconsin could have been very different. Unfortunately, due to language differences, there was a lack of understanding between the two parties involved. Peaceful people look to understand one another. While this doesn't necessarily create agreement, it does drastically lower the likelihood of conflict. In the land of plenty, what we need is peace for all to live without fear. The recipe for achieving this blessing is spelled out by Almighty God in the opening words of this week's Torah portion. If you follow my statutes and observe my commandments and perform them, I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down with no one to frighten you. We need to light our candles Friday night and we also need to kindle that inner torch we all have. The way we kindle this is by aligning our behavior with Hashem's will. 
Easier said than done. And that's why this week, when we conclude the book of Leviticus, we say together, Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazek, be strong, be strong, and we will be strong. Together, feeding off of each other's good energy, we can make this a peaceful world. I wish you a good Shabbos.